Hello friends, welcome back to Tech Greens. So in the continuation to our series on Spark interview questions, today we we'll look at what is DAG in Spark and we we'll look into the detailed internals of DAG. Uh, DAG stands for Dynamic Acyclic Graph and this is how the entire computation is performed by the Spark. So guys, let's start. So directed acyclic graph in uh, Apache Spark is basically a tree representation. It's a set of vertices and edges where the vertices represents the RDDs and the edges repre represents the operations to be applied on that RDD in, the, in that sequence. In Spark TAG, every edge directs from a previous or parent RDD to the later one in the sequence. Uh, once you call the action, uh, the created DAG is submitted to the DAG scheduler, which further splits the graph into the stages of the task. And stages are created based on the demarcation of the shuffle boundaries. A new stage is created uh, based on the data shuffling requirements. And it also touches upon from the concept of uh, your narrow transformations versus wide transformations. So all your narrow transformations will make one stage in the DAG. So let's try to understand this from this picture. This is how the Spark internals work. So as soon as the action is called on your underlying RDD, uh, that is submitted to the DAG scheduler. And DAG scheduler has this uh, DAG lineage which is the RDD lineage and based on that DAG scheduler will create the task and these tasks would be sent to the different uh, worker nodes for the executions and these tasks are also grouped in the stages based on whether it is uh, that operations is a narrow transformation or a wide transformation at a high level this is how uh, DAG is fed into a DAG scheduler and the tasks are, are executed. So uh, DAG as we have already discussed a tree representation uh, and it's an acyclic one so there are no directed cycles. If there would be directed cycles it will go into the infinite loop so idea here is to keep uh, it uh, acyclic and uh, each edge directs from one vertex to the another where each vertex represents the underlying RDD. Uh, also, uh, the DAG mechanism helps to do the better global optimization compared to the systems like uh, Hadoop MapReduce. Uh, we'll see in the next slide how it is better than the MapReduce world, but it helps in terms of performing the global optimization. Um, Spark DAG allows the user to dive into the stage and expand on the detail on any stage. We can see the detail of any stage which is executed or under execution on the Spark UI. The details of all the RDDs belonging to that particular stage of execution are expanded. Uh, the scheduler spl splits the Spark RDD into different stages as we have already discussed based on whether they are a narrow transformation or a wide transformation. Also, it's very important to understand that each stage is compri comprises of number of different tasks and these tasks are based on the partitions of the RDD. These tasks are based on the partitions of the RDD so that the same computation can be performed in parallel on the different partitions of the data. So graph here the DAG which we are talking about refers to the navigation and directed and acyclic refers to how the entire computation is done based on the DAG. So uh, essentially DAG is a blueprint to the Spark engine. Uh, based on that, the compute on the underlying RDDs is performed. Now the important question comes in, why do we need DAG and what is the whole uh, architecture principle design principle behind bringing DAG into the system. And this primarily uh, arises from the fact uh, based on the limitations of the Hadoop MapReduce world. 
which are overcome by the DAG mechanism. If you see that any computation in MapReduce is performed in three steps. First, you'll have to read the data from the underlying HDFS. Then you have to perform the mapping and the reduce operations. And finally, the computed result is written back to the HDFS or some other data storage. So what happens, each map reduce operation is kind of independent of each other in the Hadoop world and has no idea what other map reduce uh, are doing and what which map reduce can come next. And this makes the global optimizations to be performed very difficult because one map phase is not uh, aware about the next map phase and stuff like that. Also, as you know, there is a lot of input output overheads in the Hadoop world uh, so that uh, your intermediate data makes a, uh, makes a system heavier from the input output and the network overheads. <coughs> also, in the MapReduce world, uh, you know, as the whole processing happens in the multiple step, uh, till the previous job or previous step is not completed, all the further jobs are blocked. In spite, they could run in parallel or some part of the jobs could be parallelized, but as a construct of the Hadoop map reduce, all the jobs coming further are blocked for the previous job's completion. So, in Spark, uh, DAG of consecutive computation stage is formed so that all the stages which all the tasks which can run in parallel can be grouped in a single stage so that we can uh, optimize the entire execution plan how the execution of the entire computation should happen also it minimize the shuffling of data around you know these are some of the uh, reason uh, re, uh, you know rationales or reasoning why DAG is introduced with Spark compared to the, you know, inherent problems with the Hadoop map reduce. Now, very important topic comes in, how exactly DAG works. So, this is the crux of this entire video. So, the, the interpreter, which is the first layer, uh, which is based on the Scala interpreter, interprets the code with some modifications and optimizations. Uh, then Spark creates an operator graph when you enter your code in the Spark console or you run the Spark job. As soon as an action is called on the Spark RDD at a higher level, the uh, jobs, uh, the DAG lineage or the DAG, which is a lineage of RDDs, is submitted to the DAG scheduler. And then this DAG scheduler uh, you know, creates the stages stages are the categorization uh, of the tasks and all the tasks which will have narrow transformations <coughs> will be combined in one stage and then these stages are sent to the worker nodes for the execution through the task scheduler. Uh, that's how the DAG is read in the Spark world. So what we can um, understand or make a point from, th from this is at a very high level, you know, you apply two kind of operations or transformations in the RDD. Based on the kind of transformations, the stage boundaries are defined. That's how we have discussed in the previous slide as well. All the uh, narrow transformation tasks would be combined into single stage. Alongside with it, let's try to understand from this example, like you have created a data RDD B from the RDD A using the map operation, so uh, RDD always maintain a pointer to one or more of its parent. That's how the RDD lineage is created. So now uh, let's try to find out what are the advantages we are getting out of DAG in the Spark computation. First one is, as the entire RDD lineage, you know, uh, where the pointers are pointing to the parents and the uh, those RDDs are in itself pointing to their parents, even if you lost a particular RDD, that can be recovered by the DAG because that entire blueprint is there in the system that how the different transformations are occurred on the basic RDD or the input RDD. And so if in case you lose any kind of any intermediate RDD, that can be recovered using DAG. Also, if you see the Hadoop MapReduce has just 
uh, two operations the map and the reduce uh, which can uh, which can only work in consecutive so first map will happen then the output of map will go into the reduce and that's how like one execution will occur but in DAG we can have multiple levels this makes an ideal choice for the execution of spark SQL or SQL based queries because DAG is much more flexible it identifies the uh, the operations at the transformation level and then does the optimization and the categorization as DAG uh, maintains the entire RDD lineage it helps to achieve any kind of fault tolerance if there is any partition which has lost any intermediate RDD that can be recovered using the DAG uh, also as DAG is very flexible and has smart optimizations it is better suited to perform the global optimization compared to a system like a Hadoop MapReduce so these are the advantages and uh, primarily the design uh, uh, principle behind creating a DAG or using a DAG for the Spark computation so guys that's it in this particular video keep watching have a good day